Now let's look at interference in thin films. One more interesting effect, and this is caused by light's properties of refraction, reflection, and interference combined. It occurs when you have light passing through two media, and the refracted light then interferes with the partially reflected light to produce wonderful colors. Two examples you can see below are the soap bubble and the oil film on the asphalt. Here's how interference works in thin films. Below, you'll see a diagram of the soap bubble. The blue area is the soap film, which is mainly composed of water, and so we're going to use an index of refraction of 1.33. It's surrounded by air inside and outside the bubble with an index of refraction of n equals 1. So consider the path of sunlight originating from point S over here, passing onto the surface of the bubble and reflecting, and also passing into the bubble and reflecting from the inner surface and back to the observer. What the observer sees will depend on the thickness of the film and the angle of observation. Soap bubbles consist of a very thin film. So rays coming from point A on the surface and from point B at the interface between the inner surface of the bubble and the air inside the bubble travel almost the same distance. But the ray that reflects from the front surface will be inverted. The phase will change by 180 degrees. This occurs whenever light is reflected off of a material with a higher refractive index. The number of light waves traversing the film will vary with wavelength or color, and so along a different viewing direction we can expect one color to dominate all the others. The equations for thin film interference are determined using the same mathematical techniques as, def as we did for diffraction um, from a two-slit experiment. Essentially what we're looking at is the path length difference for the two waves. So as we look at the thickness of the film, T, we find that we will get constructive interference, that is, for, for wavelengths, lambda C, given by 2 NT divided by M plus a half, where N is a refractive index of the film, T is the thickness of the film, and M represents the number of wavelengths that it takes for the light to traverse the film. Destructive interference occurs in a similar situation. This time the destructive interference is given by 2 NT divided by M. So an observer looking along a given viewing angle will see a color with a wavelength of lambda C. Lens coatings are another application of interference in thin films. Here, a thin film of a transparent substance with a refractive index of N1 coats the surface of a glass with a large refractive index of N2. The coating is shown here in blue and the glass is shown in orange. Light reflects from both surfaces of the layers. In both reflections, the light is reflected from a medium of greater index than that in which it is traveling, so the same phase change occurs in both reflections. The equations that result are almost the same as those for the isolated thin film, for example the soap bubble, except the conditions for constructive and destructive interference are swapped. That's because here in both cases the reflected rays both undergo a 180 degree phase change. We're going to use T again as the thickness, N as the index of refraction, and we're going to use M being the number of wavelengths as an integer, zero, positive, or negative. For constructive interference, we get lambda sub C equals 2NT over M. Again, N is the refractive index, T is the thickness, and M is the number of wavelengths. Destructive interference occurs 
for lambda sub d equals 2nt over m minus a half. In the picture on the right, you can see two pairs of glasses. The glasses on top do not have an anti-glare coating, and the reflection of the person standing above the glasses can be seen quite clearly. With the anti-glare coating, the light is transmitted mostly through the lens, and there's much less reflection. If you look at the glass below, one can barely see any reflection of the person uh, above. These anti-glare coatings help make photographs of people with glasses look better and enables you to see the person's eyes behind the glasses.